So, uh, yeah, we just saw a little flush out, a little fluster there in the background. I was pushing a lot of buttons trying to grab some of these uh, these uh, tokens from this flush out. But what an exciting time to tune in right now. We're going to we're gonna deal with this flush out. We're going to see, uh, are there more, uh, is there more pain coming or was that the low? So uh, I've in the interim jumped into one or two uh, little longs. One of them was injective. One of them was Pyth. I'll tell you why and I'll explain it to you uh, as we go. Then uh, we're going to be looking at ETH, Solana, AVAX, which were actually looking bearish. They had head and shoulders patterns if you look at my tile uh, they were streaming bear vibes to us uh, earlier today then i've got uh, injective celestia matic we're going to talk about because there's a matic narrative coming and uh, we'll update our weave and filecoin today guys so so much to talk about if you're sitting in positions and you're sweating well you're in the right place we're going to look at uh, a lot of these coins now we're going to assess if that was the low or not so uh, brace yourselves we could have a little bit of fun here Okay, so just uh, for those of you that are new to the bull market, just remember a uh, little bit of red. What does that mean? It means opportunity is potentially coming for us. We can't have permanently green. We can't permanently feel rich because then it's just too easy. They're here to take your money and uh, we here to play the game and to beat them. So uh, look at uh, banter bubbles here. We can see the stock net 46% down. I think that staking narrative uh, died a, a very quick death there uh, on stock net. We've seen Filecoin still holding uh, the storage narratives holding. Chili's had some news. Chili's was pumping. So, and uh, ETH is green. Not surprised yet. We've seen a lot of uh, strength for ETH uh, lately. And, uh, you know, everyone is now screaming alt season and uh, ETH, uh, sorry, ETH BTC strength and ETH season. So, uh, we're going to be definitely talking about that at the moment. And, uh, yeah, some nice levels have been hit. Hopefully, we're not going to get rinsed. So, let's urgently just look at BTC before I start flashing uh, tweets and things like that to you guys and uh, trying to just pick up on the current news out there. Uh, right. So, if we look at the range, BTC hasn't even dropped uh, the range low from uh, this weekend. So, you know, so far, it's not looking the worst ever, but I definitely don't like the look of this candle right here, the way they've sold us up. So they gave us a little fake out. You would have noticed about an hour and a half, everyone was feeling a little bit euphoric. Things were pumping. ETH was pinging 2,300 and uh, we were back on the bull train. And what do they do? Typical crypto vibes. Little, uh, little, uh, little dump there for you. Um, just to like ruin your Tuesday. So uh, this is what we're looking at right now. I've got Bruce in the back as well. And uh, he's talking about, uh, he's looking at this 236 region. And uh, this is a hot zone for us, this 49,500. So I am watching this closely. That is, uh, that is still a bullish area. So whatever pain they give us while BTC drops to this 236 region, we need to understand that is still a bullish move for BTC. It's still a bullish pump. So we can't get too upset if they do want to bleed us down here. And that is going to take a lot of these altcoins, which I'm going to talk to you about now today uh, to potentially their next level and a lot of the next level uh, that we're talking about is going to be 618 pullbacks uh, and things like that so we're just going to plan nicely here and uh, make sure that uh, you know that uh, we're not going to get killed uh, if they do come and send us lower and uh, then upside if they do start miraculously pumping us up here uh, this evening we're looking at uh, 57 this is still this marker that i've got here it's a, a 786 fib and uh, we're looking uh, at that uh, it's 57 500 so that is our upside region so key areas we're watching here downside uh, 40 49 500 upside 57 57 500 and uh, that's our markers for the day Okay, let's see. Uh, let's just, uh, we, we had a little flush here. Okay, so here's the first one. So uh, here's Injective. Now I'm going to get to the news and things now, but I, I think it's just critical that we look where some of these alts have bounced, you know, before these things run away from us. So while this was happening, I was prepping for the show and, uh, you know, the market started dumping there and I was getting a bit flustered. And uh, the only one that I could start grabbing was uh, Injective on that dump. And you can see what I mean uh, when I say these alts are dropping to their next level. So we had Injective sitting at a nice little 618 and horizontal with 50 day MA. And then our next big zone uh, on Injective was this big horizontal area. So uh, one of the lessons you, you, you learn when you've been rinsed out enough in this crypto market is you always try and understand where's your next big level for your altcoins. And no doubt when they come with these dumps, you always get that initial bounce on the next big level. Now, it doesn't mean that that dip is now over. It doesn't mean 
that uh, they're not coming back to test this region. But we often get the situation where uh, we get this initial bounce, we can buy that little bounce, send it back higher, and then they want to come back often and give us this uh, double bottom and something along these lines. So just because we've had a strong bounce here doesn't mean we're out of the woods. So uh, injective traders, if you are looking at injective and uh, you haven't entered yet, what I would say to you, what you need to understand here is injective needs to reclaim this major support area above us, this 50-day moving average uh, and the 618 region. So we really need to just reclaim this first before you can start getting bullish again uh, on uh, on injective. And this is the same thing uh, for a lot of these tokens that I'm going to show you guys. So all the tokens in your charts in front of you, uh, we're going to be looking at very similar principle here. So we need to reclaim those levels because how often do we see in the in the crypto market that they want to send us back first when you think you're out of the woods they come for you again so just understand that and uh, this process after a dump can often take uh, a few days to play out before we can turn super bullish again so uh, eyes on this current injective level uh, if you're not in it reminder reclaim this 50-day moving average find some support up here um, it's around about this 36 region that's where you want to be and uh, all I had open was my uh, current two bit uh, account so yesterday you guys saw me I was long file coin which I've closed uh, at that TP zone I'm going to tell you about I was short stacks you can see that one is still running uh, at the moment and I was long matic that's okay and uh, the two uh, altcoins that I've grabbed now in that dump Pyth an injective in my current two bit account so you can grab the link if you want to trade with me on two bit there is a link in the description and uh, there are sign up bonuses and all sorts of things there uh, on two bit that you can play with uh, at the moment so grab the link in the description they also kyc friendly uh, if that's a thing for you and uh, yeah take a look see how uh, see how it works for you right now you can see on this two bit chart um, well nice thing here you can chart these tokens on there platform but we can see we've had a strong bounce uh, from Pyth. I got in a little bit late so uh, for me I've set my stop just under this is a 0 0.522 region uh, on Pyth in case they do uh, they do come back quickly and try and rinse me out there so you can see that Pyth is about to turn red so we'll keep our eyes on that okay uh, let's just uh, let's just recap there is still bullish news in the market Bitcoin ETFs not not best ever week with a two and a half billion haul Okay, so things are looking good out there, but it doesn't mean they can't come and flush us out, just make us feel a little bit of pain. Remember, everyone, including your grandmother, has been late longing uh, all sorts of things over the last four or five days. So uh, we, that you need to understand the amount of long sitting here. Uh, it's just ridiculous and they have to come and flush it out. So I'm going to be in, very interested to see the figures after this little flush out on some of these alts and see uh, how much they did clear up. Um, then I just loved this. I thought this was such quality. Uh, there was a photo taken of Sam Bankman Freed from FTX. So those of you that are around for FTX vibes, uh, Bruce, were you around for FTX vibes? Were you oh, yeah. were you feeling that FTX burn? Uh, well, I didn't have anything in it, but uh, all my friends got uh, toasted, so I was commiserating with them. <laughs> right? Did you feel Did you feel FTX vibes? So, so I was at uh, I was at the Solana conference when this was going down, and uh, we were in Portugal, you know, and we were having fun, and Solana was pumping, and these altcoins were doing so well, and then FTX started falling over, and uh, I just remember like I was eating those pasta de nata things, and the more I started eating it, while this uh, soul and everything started dumping, and the market started collapsing, the saltier it started tasting to the point where I actually couldn't eat them anymore. It was making my food so salty while I was watching this market fall over, while I was supposed to be having fun uh, at uh, the Seoul conference. So here's old uh, here's old SBF uh, with his jail photo. And uh, this is this is so cool because this guy next to him, they interviewed this guy next to him and I just love this. I wanted to read this to you. That guy, that fat dude next to him, his name is G-Lock. And it says here, um, they asked G-Lock, they interviewed him, and G-Lock described SBF as being weird as shit. And he says, the scruffy, scruffy than a motherfucker, though he later acknowledged that SBF was actually a good guy. <laughs> so look at this guy. Um, looks like, a, it doesn't look like the most fun I've ever seen there. You know, that's like trade trying to be long when the market's dumping on you, um, hanging out in uh, in that sort of area. But uh, yeah, nice little, nice little picture there. Um, okay, then we've got Rancoon asking a very serious question here. He's saying, where is retail? 
And uh, he's saying it's quite strange. You know, they, they haven't really come back yet. And uh, we haven't seen this massive wave. We've got BTC at 52. And uh, we're just not getting that that full retail wave yet uh, that everyone's expecting. So uh, he's got a nice little uh, a nice little thread here. I'm not going to bore you by reading it to you. But uh, what I would suggest is go check it out. Rancoon. Uh, Rancoon ETH. Go read his little story there. Uh, nice little nice little viewpoint on uh, the current market situation. And then we had some bullish news out of China. They cut their interest rates. So that means these Asians might be pumping it for us at night. Well, I'm in I'm in GMT plus two, you know, so if that's in the middle of the night for me and uh, there's nothing better in a bull market than waking up the next day after the Asians have pumped your bags um, as hard as possible. So that could be something fun uh, to look forward to. They have cut their, their five-year loan prime rate. So that is very bullish uh, for the market. And then uh, Ganymede over here, uh, starts dumping things like he wants to trade Lena and uh, he's talking Chinese narrative and that could play very nicely into the fact that these Chinese are trying to sort their economy out and just pump a little bit of money into the system there. So uh, eyes on uh, eyes on some Chinese tokens. I'm not doing Chinese tokens today, but one of them is Lena. The other one is CFX. There's another one, ACH. Um, and I think there was one Flamingo uh, at some point that we were trading. So uh, do your own research on some Chinese tokens, but uh, it, it, worth a look. And uh, if these things start looking interesting, we'll get, uh, we'll get stuck into them this week, no doubt. Um, right. Okay. Then another big one, uh, ETH BTC. So uh, I wanted to just show you guys something very interesting here. So I've pulled out all my moving averages here. I've got 50 day, 100 day, 200 day, 200 week. And uh, it's actually very notable here that ETH BTC has blown the 100 day and the 50 day moving average. And I would say that's quite a big thing. That's quite a big deal uh, for this current ETH BTC situation. And uh, what it means to us is even if we do get a pullback on this, we do have a nice support base that we can work from so if things do turn bearish and let's say dominance starts reversing these alts start bleeding against bitcoin and all sorts of things when we see a pullback for ETH btc hitting the 100 day and the 50 day moving average in this sort of region that should be an area where we could start saying okay maybe this madness and this dump has started slowing down and uh, we could be getting some kind of reversal so nice big solid level for us to work with at least and then bigger picture we are pushing this is the weekly chart so bigger picture we are looking at a scenario uh, pretty much like this so we've got our highs that we know about so you know perfect scenario for me uh, when this does pop we are looking for this little pop we're going to look for this rejection uh, at these horizontals then we're going to treat the 200 week and the 200 day ma as our support for our next launch pad and to take us to valhalla basically um well that is the plan at least okay so 50 day and 100 day ma they've been cracked they are now support for us next one let's blow the 200 day let's blow the 200 week and uh, form that as support and then uh, then we're going to be flying right btc we've looked at okay dominance this was a big one so uh dominance on the weekly and you would have felt your altcoins bleeding you would have seen your bags bleeding out there and that's a direct result of this dominance pumping on the weekly and you can see this candle now they've started pushing it up here uh, on the weekly and uh, very interesting 50 day moving average bounce so that provided support uh, for dominance and uh, that starts pushing up so if you're wondering why your bags are bleeding and things like that always just look at dominance look what dominance is busy doing uh, to you guys and uh, right now it's pumping so uh, again nothing to really be concerned about this is our high that we want to watch this 54.3 region so it can actually just push up into that area no problem there as long as we're rejecting uh, somewhere around there then we can be happy we can be comfortable uh, that we're not going to get absolutely rinsed here uh, if it does just a reminder altcoin traders if it does start pushing higher the next feasible zone for me the next big area uh, that i would expect some kind of rejection is going to be this 57 percent area and with this move is going to be a lot of pain a lot of alt pain, a lot of the profits uh, that uh, that we've made probably will get flushed out uh, if it does do that. So keep one arm dominance permanently uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks here. Uh, ben says, why are you not wearing your bull shirt? <laughs> was that a bull shirt? Hey? Was, it, was that a bit of a bull shirt that I had yesterday? Um, yeah, it was a good shirt though. It was a good shirt. Bruce, you liked my shirt yesterday. That was a I think I could have undone the extra button. I was going to say, that's the sexiest shirt you've ever won in your show. So I love it. <laughs> could have done like more buttons down. Okay? <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah, you we'll could have. More, maybe you're, a you're gold star- chain. I think you're on your way to being a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, who's in the chats here and who's feeling the heat? Uh, tell me, guys, how are you feeling out here? I want to see. Uh, Yanko says trading 3x to be safe. Yes. Um, you know, so my strategy here is, you know, any big red candles that we see is to back, jump back on and add uh, to my 3x and 5x margin positions because my viewpoint here is net long. We want to be uh, net long and, uh, you know, that's my, that's my bias. Uh, for this current situation so big uh, big uh, red candles for me 3x 5x and just start building up some of those leverage um, so some of those margin positions and then of course the normal leverage stuff that you see us doing uh, in futures we will we will be sending those um, monokey says retail haven't forgotten the last time they got burned and this was a very important point that uh, he's making here because retail only recently just got wrecked by crypto i mean the battle wounds are still there the scars are there they they're still feeling salty about it so uh, it's going to take a little bit more than btc at 50k i think to really bring them back uh, after they got so rinsed out i mean there was so much drama we had luna we had ftx we had uh, uh, what was it three arrows we had just everything going wrong celsius and uh, they've only just started recovering now so uh, you can't blame them for being a bit salty uh, about uh, about the crypto market at the moment um let's see what else here yeah drew says retail isn't in the market they are broke at the moment kurt says they shy yeah i think they're shy um but we must send retail they can come watch my show they can watch run show learn fundamentals come watch my show learn how to trade these charts we could have some fun here uh yeah michelle says retail is feeling broke um benjamin says should i close my file trade benjamin uh, file was at resistance so i'm going to show you guys now uh so i closed that trade it was a scalp long for me i did quite nicely on it and uh, i mean if you jumped on it on the show yesterday with me i mean you saw i had quite a shitty entry um but uh, it was pumping nicely so uh, i just closed at that resistance area that i showed you guys yesterday it was that 7.75 uh, region i think it was so let's just look at file uh yes okay so here it was so this was our resistance area we were looking at uh yeah 7.8 to it was about eight that was the area uh we were watching there for filecoin so you can see it makes perfect sense if it pumps into the zone you can see big resistance area big rejection zone doesn't mean that the the filecoin trade and the are we've trade is over um but often when you get a situation like that you now need to sit back and look for some kind of consolidation some kind of flag and see uh if they're going to prep us for that next move but uh, if we do get some more downside file coin well uh eight hour chart this is telling me very clean uh 6.5 that's your area if we do get a pullback that's your first real area of interest uh if things really get a bit dark out there so uh, eyes on that at the moment 6.5 uh, is your big support zone other than that just watch this little flag look for consolidation here and uh, if this market recovers and uh, i would expect uh, after that flush it should recover um we could see filecoin just kicking on within the next couple of hours uh let's see who else is here sean is here abonne is here let's see what else anibus is shouting jupiter 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 uh ian says he needs some cash love now i haven't looked at cash in two days uh well when, when it was yesterday so we, we we got out of that trade yesterday um we we can do a cash update but i've still got stuff for you okay uh stacks traders so this is our weekly on stacks that we're looking at and this uh, is a btc proxy trade so remember when btc is doing well you ride stacks it, it really pumps with btc and uh, my my idea here on the stacks current uh, stack short that i'm in is that even if bt starts ranging and we do have some kind of alt season and these altcoins start pumping to me uh, the stacks narrative will then be over because it's uh, it rides with btc so my idea here for stacks was just to kind of bleed out uh, to the 3a2 region so stacks is going to rely on btc strength uh for the next move so if btc starts pumping this is my next area that i'm looking for a short situation uh and a potential short setup that sort of zone the 32 the 3.25 that sort of area uh short zone for me other than that i am sitting in this original short that i opened yesterday and this was just a weekly uh a weekly hot zone a weekly resistance area and uh, it's not a massive target uh for the move down it's uh 2.2 is the is the area i'm watching so that is my current plan and and you know that's why i like this stack short because it's a weak market stacks come down uh, altcoins pumping i would expect stacks to come down as well especially after leading uh, a lot of these moves here 
uh sure guys lots of questions here and uh hopefully okay i'm gonna start trying to fly through some of these tokens for you so i want to cover as much as we can okay so this is eth on the daily uh right now looking so strong like no issues here with eth i mean that it hardly flinched on that flush out i mean we keep giving uh these big support areas here for eth this 2700 big region for eth you can see why this is a strong zone for me but uh, i mean we've just had a market flush out here and uh, ETH just chilled, absolutely chilled, uh, 2,870. So watch this 2,870. This is a nice little support marker for you on ETH. And then the next big area, 2,700. If ETH starts dumping that 2.7, then things are very bad out there. They are very salty. We're getting rinsed out. It's not going to be fun. So uh, 2.7 is where it's at for me for ETH. Extra buys, those type of things. That where that's where we can look uh, on any pullbacks here. And remember, I mean that's a it's quite a big pullback. If we get ETH dipping back to two seven, that's a ten percent move on ETH. So that is pretty serious, and that normally translates to maybe a fifteen percent move on some of these other altcoins. Um, Shahaz says, is it a good time to enter spot entries on alts? Well. If you're DCAing into certain projects, yes, uh, I would say that makes sense. I think if we if we agree that over the next 12 to 18 months, we need to be net long and BTC is going to be at 100K or one of those things, uh, then the alts will follow. They, they will no doubt follow BTC. So if that is your sentiment on the market and if you're bullish on the market, then you can start DCAing and, you know, every week you can get some buys in. And uh, I know Bruce is an expert uh, at doing that stuff and he talks to the Sniper Club guys about it all the time. So if you want to know more, he even does a, a Zoom portfolio mm -hmm. call. Yep. We, have, we have a session on portfolio, trading psychology, basic trading techniques, advanced trading techniques. Man, we're busy all day long. So, yeah, if you guys are interested, Sniper Club, there's a link in the description. Okay, the legend will guide you through your portfolio. He will guide you through some psychology. We've also got Craig there as well uh, doing psychology stuff for us. And then obviously me and Sheldon. Well, Sheldon's away on his honeymoon now, but when he's back, he'll be back in full force. But it's me and Sheldon, Simon, Dave, Bruce, um, you know, doing our thing. And uh, even Mama Sniper make some guest appearances in there. Um, okay, so the, the, the tokens you saw on my tile. Okay, this is just beautiful, you know. Uh, this is why I love TA so much. I, I mean, it really tells a story, doesn't it? And, uh, you know, when you start printing a head and shoulders, you start getting, you're getting, you start getting the signs that things are potentially going to turn bearish. And we saw this on AVAX and Solana. The charts look basically uh, identical. And they were telling us the story uh, that we were potentially going to get this pullback. And now we've pinged our first hot zone. So remember, when you get a dump, You've always got to identify your first hot zones, your first big areas. And uh, I marked this out in Sniper Club. I actually tweeted about this today. Uh, if you want to follow me, guys, on Twitter, I uh, don't have that tweet here. Um, let me see. Wait, let's see if they'll give it to me. Here it is. Um, no, it's locked me out. Okay. Uh, follow me at the Lord of Entry. I actually tweeted uh, this head and shoulders setup on uh, AVAX and Sol, saying things could be looking a little bit salty here for these two, uh, for the twins uh, at the moment. So AVAX, this is our first big zone that we've now come to test. And you'll probably find this is tied in with a 382 fib. So let's just confirm. Let's just confirm which fibs we've got here. Okay. So that is a 618 if we pull it uh, from the 6th of February. And uh, let's see if we pull it from here. Yeah. Okay. So that is going to be. Okay. There's your 382. Okay. So tell me the science doesn't work when the market is dumping. All you need in your life is a 382 big pull, a 618 fib big pull to give you these first reaction zones. That's all you need. Um, so uh, first area of interest has been pinged now for AVAX. But what does this mean for us now? Uh, if we get this bearish setup, uh, you can see we've now broken the neck. Uh, of this head and shoulders. So what's, uh, what's going on here is we've broken now this horizontal. So what does this tell us? This tells us we are potentially now in a downtrend on AVAX, okay? So how do we play this? What is the thing? So you can you can either be a bear now and you can say, okay, cool, uh, I'm looking for shorts or you can be a bull and uh, you can say, okay, I'm gonna wait for my hot zones to hit and your first hot zone has pinged uh, for your bull uh, for your bull longs your 3a2 has pinged uh, what is bearish about this now is that we are in this downtrend so we are potentially looking at something along these lines so push up and then we're looking at a potential rejection now uh, at this horizontal because now we've lost this horizontal support now we're looking at a potential rejection and then a move lower to what i would think is at least this 50-day moving average or uh, the 618 slightly lower down let me just get that back 
Okay, so this is a typical uh, bearish short setup now uh, for you guys. So for those of you that are feeling bearish now on the market, what happens after a dump? We get a bounce. Then you get that rejection uh, in that area. And this is what I was speaking about briefly yesterday on a potential short setup. So the bears, you're going to be looking for something like this. Um, the stop loss, that's going to depend on the size of your leverage and things like that. But this is going to be a typical uh, short setup. And you're going to have to look for a nice tight entry there. Uh, let's see if we can get about a 2% stop for you. And uh, when it comes back to test your horizontal, okay, that should be a sign that uh, you could then take your short. So let's uh, let's pull some fibs here. Okay, there's a nice 382 rejection area. Okay, so you could look for something along these lines. Okay, and then you want to put your stop above the 382. So you want to close above the 382 and your entry somewhere around uh, that 382 region. And then your target is going to be at least the 50 day moving average. So a 7% move. And uh, your lower target is about a 14% flush out. But uh, I wouldn't go much lower than that 14% move. I think around there, the buyers are going to be stepping in properly uh, on a lot of these altcoins. If we start hitting those 618 pools, I've got a feeling uh, the market's going to rip uh, off those areas. So watch these 618 regions very closely and uh, track your downtrend. And at any point in time, if AVAX starts breaking your downtrend, which you can see now is clear and it exists, um, then you can turn bullish again. So right now, um, you're looking for a pump into uh, a resistance area and then that rejection, and that's going to open up bear country for you guys and you're going to look for that move lower. So just watch out this trend. I didn't draw this arrow very nicely, but uh, something along these lines, that's what you're looking at. And then you can invert the chart is what I showed you guys yesterday and a uh, very typical bull setup for the bull traders out there when you look for longs what do you do you get that break of trend then you look for that retest of horizontal and trend and uh, then you look for your buyers and it's the same principle uh, for the bears so if you want to uh, if you want to get involved in taking shorts okay especially in uh, a bull market again I exercise a little bit of caution but your targets are quite clear 7% and a 14% uh, targets available there okay let's do soul same story okay so exactly the the same principle uh souls come and bounced exactly off its 382 so i'm just going to show you again you pull your fibs from the low to the high look at the science one more time the science just telling us the science is like a magnet it tells you where you're going to get that reaction where you're going to get that that bounce so uh what are we looking for on soul exactly the same principle uh on avax that you're going to be looking at so if that's going to play out you're going to have your downtrend uh, in play. And uh, let's see how Sol behaves. I see Sol has actually held uh, this little neck here uh, at the moment. So let's see Let's see if that's going to be okay. But I would say worst case for Sol, you're looking at a double bottom here. I mean, sorry, best case here. Uh, potential visit here uh, to 103 one more time just to take out that wick and uh, give us this little double bottom here. So there's a little option for you. So if you didn't get that uh, 382 bounce, you could look. Uh, at another bounce play at 103.7 uh, if they come back and visit it one more time. So eyes on that. And uh, remember, this is also why I, I always say it's so important. You get alarms on your charts and you preset these areas for you so that when these moments happen, uh, you can take advantage of this. And uh, nothing wrong with presetting some limit orders. Simon likes to call them stink bids uh, in these areas. And you just have to ping the 382. You have a stink bid at the 618. And uh, we know, we know these tokens are going to bounce here. It's just fact uh, that they bounce in these regions. They react. It doesn't mean, again, that they go to the moon uh, after hitting these zones, but we do know that these are reaction areas and uh, your next one for soul if it does want to turn south for us 94 uh, is your next buy zone that's a big buy zone for me uh, on solana if we're coming down to 94 that's a buy zone even if you are going to just ride up this move from the 618 to the 382 fib even if you just want to play that bounce you're going to get a 10 percent bounce uh, before you have to turn uh, too bearish again. So eyes on these levels right now, big areas for me, Solana, 103.5 and uh, call it 94 to 94.5. Both are very hot zones uh, for soul dancers. Sean likes, Sean likes my name. <laughs> Um, I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like it. It's, it, it as it turns out, I'm quite good at entries. <laughs> um, let's see what else we got. Uh, Trader Joe, that's an AVAX play. Okay, so Trader Joe's an AVAX play. Again, bullish AVAX, then you buy the proxy buy. There's uh, Trader Joe and those type of things. Uh, Monkey Ball Soul says GRT, GRT. Um, 
Anabus is still asking for dupe. Okay, let's, uh, okay, injective we've covered. Let's see if we're getting rinsed. Okay, we're not getting rinsed yet. Okay, so we got that bounce play in an injective. Uh, just a reminder here, nothing wrong with them coming back for that little double bottom to test this region again. So uh, if you're watching your own charts, look out for those type of things um, that they do come and send that. Okay, here's Pyth. So this is why I like Pyth, okay? So Pyth's strong uh, staking narrative and, uh, you know, it's drifted now into our area. We pinged uh, our first uh, our first buy zone for Pyth. And uh, if the staking narrative continues and the hype continues, we know Wednesday, Thursday uh, is the epoch for Pyth and staking and you need to lock it up. And uh, they tend, okay, we, we've seen a trend where they buy Pyth on a Wednesday or Thursday and uh, there's a bit of buying pressure and it starts to move up a little bit. So if that's going to play out this time, again you know this time could be different it doesn't uh, always play out exactly like that i like this box this is a 618 fib it's a horizontal region uh and uh, we've got a trend so for me uh that is why i took a stab at pyth 0.54 if you get that by 0.54 for pyth that's a nice little entry zone if we lose it again very simple play that's our fun line if we lose our fun line this rising trend that means the market is bearish and we are heading lower and uh, your next target for Pyth is probably going to be the 50 day moving average lower down. So right now, your best area here, 54, that's a long zone for you. We lose the rising trend. You got to step back. You got to let the market play out a little bit. Next area looking at most likely 50 day moving average round about uh, 0.43. So uh, eyes on that on your charts, put those marks down and uh, let's see. Let's see how it plays out here. Ben says, can we get Pyth for a discount? Can he buy any more? Um, yeah, look, I mean, uh, it, it, Ben also says it keeps pumping. But yeah, it, it keeps pumping because there's a staking narrative at the moment. But remember, we saw that uh, on Banter Bubbles today, we saw the StarkNet. Uh, the, the, the staking narrative fell over today for StarkNet. I think people did all their staking to get their tokens and then they've just dumped everything. So just remember, at some point, uh, the, the cards do fall over. Uh, it can't be permanently up in anything. And uh, I'm including uh, are we and Filecoin and all these things uh, in that uh, in that equation. Okay, next one, Celestia. Okay, so again, fallen into our hot zone. These charts, guys, they're in the Sniper Club. I update them every single day for you. Uh, here they are sitting in Sniper Club and uh, first first hot zone hit. So if you're a Celestia fan, this is your first buy, to, buy region. 50-day uh, moving average. This is why I have it on my charts. Look at the size and the quality. Uh, of that reaction that it gives us. So if you're not using 382s and 618 fibs, look at this 50 day moving average. Uh, they just talk to these. Uh, we just keep it simple. You just have to keep it simple. Okay, 618s, 382 fibs, 50 day moving average. You get your reaction areas, you get your zones. And uh, this is now, this is your marker. This is 17.23. Uh, that is a, a marker for you. If we close under 17.23, it more than likely means Celestia is coming down. 16.6 so watch that area that's your that's your low marker if that was the flush uh worst case you're kind of looking for that little double bottom and uh you know maybe just another little test uh, of this low for a little bounce uh something along those lines but uh, yeah celestia so far in a decent zone uh the hottest zone obviously 618 you know i put a lot more weight uh, on a 618 so eyes on 16.6 as your next area where you can dive in if that one uh, if that one fails I'm just reading the chats, just reading the chats. It's PYR, geez, I owe you guys a gaming session, hey? I owe you guys a proper gaming token session. Uh, big time, PYR, Nakamoto, I need to I need to cover these for you. Um, okay, let's uh, let's talk about this poll that I've put in the chats here. Uh, let's see if uh, you guys have filled it in yet. Uh, let's see, there we go. Okay, so, here you go. Now I can see me on my own screen. Okay. Help Dylan with his option trades from the 29th of March. Matic above 1.17, 65%. Okay. Uh, Matic below 0.81, 35%. Okay. I, I, I must say, I'm bullish on Matic because there's a Matic narrative coming out again. They're rebranding and they're doing all these things. And, uh, you know, last time I faded you guys uh, on your vote. I think you guys were 60% bullish and I faded you. And uh, it hasn't worked out for me. I mean, here's my current position. I think I faded you on Link and uh, I'm getting rinsed again. Uh, no, I faded you on Sol. And uh, so the first time I went with you guys, the second time I went with you guys, got rinsed, got rinsed. Okay. Then I faded you guys and I got rinsed. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, this is hilarious, guys. We need to get this. We need to get this together. I mean, Ray, have you have you ever seen this? I just need a fade every time, or I need to go with them every time. I think, think, think you just need to get a lot of entry and nail it. <laughs> so I'm bullish. I'm bullish, Matic. Okay, and uh, I, I quite like that sentiment. So 65% of you are saying Matic uh, above 1.17. Now, this is a month away, so a lot can happen here. We can get our little flush out, and this whole Matic narrative can kick on again, and uh, we can get our position. So I like I like that vote, and uh, I'm going to now open a Matic long option expiring on the 29th of March. Okay, so here it is, 29th of March. You click your little box here. Uh, 29th of March is the expiration date. I want to look for break even uh, above one. 1.17 and here it is i've highlighted it here and uh, let's just get it again uh they've changed it okay 1.16 okay there it is okay 1.17 and then on coin call if you take a look on the right hand side after you click it tells you how much you're going to make when it ends at these certain levels so if it if it's above 1.17 it's break even if it's 1.22, you make 100%. If it's 1.28, you make 220%. If it's 1.34, you make 340%. So they give you a nice little uh, explanation uh, as to how it can play out and uh, and how much you can make. And then your risk is obviously how much capital you want to put in it. And uh, I see I've got $200 available uh, over here. And here's the ask price. So I'm going to click the ask price uh, on the right-hand side. And uh, let's just, uh, yeah, let's buy it. So I'm going to drag that dial. I'm going to spend $200 here and uh, I'm going to buy that Matic long option for above 1.17. Okay, there we go. So now we locked in. We locked and loaded uh, for Matic long. So Matic narrative is the play. And uh, if you want to join me on this, guys, remember coin call link is in the description. If you go under uh, the show description, there's an entire shopping basket uh, for you guys. There's a lot going on. Look at a coin call offering free airdrops and endless giveaways. Okay, so get stuck into CoinCall, uh, Prime XBT. You know what I'm trading on there. There's a couple of the dust coins there, but they're offering also great sign-up bonuses, 2-bit as well. Um, basically, go shopping. Sniper List is there. Uh, Sniper Club is there for you guys as well if you want to play around there. And remember, you get to see the legend in Sniper Club. Look, there he is. He doesn't even know. See, oh, there he is. Oh, I... <laughs> Sorry, I was going to charity. <laughs> Bruce is uh, Bruce is prepping a chart for us, so uh, yeah, uh, he's gonna he's gonna get us Audis. He's got a setup uh, on Audis for us. Um, okay, so just a little bit of matic narrative here for you guys. Uh, Polygon Labs they partnered with the Human Institute. They announced a partnership with Animoca Brands. Okay, they're launching Proof of Humanity, so it's like a world coin competitor. These guys, anyway. Um, but uh, for me, that's bullish. Uh, more bullish things for Matic, including their little rebrand. So let's just update where we are uh, on our current matic trade that uh, you guys well hopefully some of you guys took with me uh, when we put this together uh, probably about a week ago uh, let's just uh, let's just see where we are here okay so here we are uh, matic just just finished under our tp2 it actually didn't ping i'm a little bit salty uh, about that i don't know how i missed that or how i got that tp wrong but we were out by uh, basically 0. Uh, 0.01 cent or something uh, we were out of our tp zone but uh, very interesting the way these zones play out for you and this is why we call them big reaction zones because look what happened it dipped down and reacted perfectly on the previous tp which was our next uh, reaction zone when we were going uh, when we were taking the trade going long so nice little reaction here for matic so far so matic traders support 0 0.94 that is your support region right now uh, that you are watching for matic so close under 0 0.94 and then you're probably making your way down to this trend region but uh, i'm still bullish uh, overall matic and uh, we've got a nice thick long front uh, fun line over here so let it do its thing let's see how we go maybe we push it up there um, and uh, we only turn bearish when we start losing uh, the fun line uh, on matic so you know long may this trend continue and uh, we've got uh, i think it's 40 days now for this uh, 1.17 and above to play out for matic i must say i'm feeling quite bullish on matic i'm feeling quite confident uh, that we're going to be uh, a little bit higher than that actually uh, in about six weeks time so let's see Let's actually save this clip because if we're in the midst of another bear market and BTC is at like 25K, I'm going to become a meme on the internet, basically. Uh, so let's uh, let's save this clip. That could be fun. <laughs> Ray, is it worth it? <laughs> uh, 
Okay, uh, Arweave and Filecoin. Let's update where we are. Arweave and Filecoin. So big movers, uh, big narrative. And uh, Uncle Run, obviously a massive fan uh, of Arweave. And uh, I think he likes Filecoin as well, to be honest. He just likes the narrative as a whole. And uh, Arweave looks like it's got some moves uh, and some way to go. So if you are sitting in Arweave's spot, and things like that well it looks like a nice little comfortable ride for you as long as nothing too serious is going to happen here uh, in the market 17.4 to 17.6 still looks like an obtainable uh, upside for me and big support that you want to watch so you can see we've had a pullback today and uh, they've stayed above our support area so 13.4 is a nice hot zone for me any pullbacks down to about 13.4 uh, you can look for buyers in this area looking for something like that if it does pull back then you can get uh, a potential trade uh, going there in that area so keep your eyes on that nice little nice little range place still available here uh, on our weave and then very simple very easy exit so uh, if you start losing this weekly level it's a very simple play because your next level you're looking at is about 11.7 so if things turn dark and deadly uh, out there that's going to be your next area this 11.7 uh, region is your next potential uh, bounce area slash long region uh, and things like that for our weave so just let it play out a little bit Razmatez says, "Time for me to buy the rinse token, <laughs> guys. We got to get we got to get these options right. Uh, we got to we got to get them right. I need to, we we're not going to quit until we get it right here. Um, okay, let's see. Sui, oh, the, we must actually cover Sui, guys. Um, let's just do Filecoin quickly." Okay, so yeah, here we are, Filecoin. So just update uh, flagging. So eyes on this flag, uh, you know, keep your eyes on this. Let's see how it plays out. Bullish vibe is that break higher uh, that uh, I showed you guys earlier. Bearish vibes, you've got your support uh, at 6.5. Okay, uh, here's the dust coin, XRP. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's hilarious that I actually ripped this thing off. And uh, I was ripping off the XRP army, and two days later I was in XRP long because it was looking, uh, it was looking quite interesting. So here we are, just another use case for the 50-day moving average. Look at this perfect pullback onto the 50-day moving average for XRP. Beautiful bounce off the 50-day moving average and some horizontals there. So again, if it's not on your charts, get the 50-day moving average on your chart. It gives you a nice marker and a nice reaction zone uh, for a lot of these altcoins. And you can literally have your orders set on these areas, the 382, the 618, the 50-day. Um, and when you get these moves, great for scalpers because we know when they dump, uh, these are the areas that uh, they like to come visit us. Okay, uh, let's go. Uh, Sui, and then guys, dump a couple of charts here quickly into the chats. Let me see what I can get through uh, for you guys. I see Injective is turning a little bit green here. Uh, let's see, Pyth is just hanging on uh, at the moment. Celestia is pretty flat. Let's see where we are. Sol's turning a little bit green. Okay, good reaction there. AVAX, good reaction off the 382 so far. Okay, so could get our little bounce there. Okay, and uh, stacks uh, still sitting down. Okay, let's go, uh, Sui. Okay, I wanted to do Sui and Say because they both look very interesting earlier today. It looked like we were going to get our entries, and uh, I, I dropped the Sui chart in the Sniper Club for you guys, and I think we've actually pinged it. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that science, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Look you gotta love the side. sign i mean uh -huh. guys perfect bounce I, I, like i can't make this up okay i didn't nope. yeah this is insane um okay i want to just zoom in again for you guys one more time you've got to trust the science look at the 618 okay what did we do we had a dump what did it ping the 618 for beautifully for the reaction okay so it gave head and shoulders vibes there was the long setup sitting in the sniper club waiting for you guys okay waiting for you guys in my section there yep. um okay what does this mean now does this mean we're out of the woods no okay so nope. sui uh, all it means for us is we've got a reaction zone okay so we know where it reacts we know we get that initial bounce again we can never say exactly how high a bounce is going to be but what we can do is just work uh with parameters like things like this resistance areas trend lines and all these types of things so right now you can see we've got a little bit of resistance there and then we do have a little resistance area over here so if we are long sui 
now, what you need to do is look out for any pumps into that region for a potential rejection, okay? And then they could send us back down for that double bottom play, okay? And uh, if they're going to send us lower, then we're going to lose the fun line and we're going to be testing levels underneath. And then we are looking most likely at somewhere a combination of the 50-day moving average and that horizontal round about uh, 1.4. Okay, so first bounce is approved. Okay, we've, we've pinged the first zone and uh, looking good. But uh, again, that's now your support market. That is your area that you want to watch. This could take a few days to play out now. Wait for this trend. Uh, you can see from uh, we now Tuesday, uh, we could get back to this trend only on Friday. You know, maybe Friday, Bruce, we're going to be turning bullish again, pumping into the weekend. Yep. So let's see how this plays out. So things could be a little bit slow for us over the next couple of days. Okay, Bruce has got a setup. I do, actually, I've got Am a couple right? on one token. Okay. Okay. So, Let's hear it. Uh, all right. Can you bring my chart up? Yep. So, um, so I'm looking at Ordi because Ordi is also, uh, you know, basically did a SR flip or pumped cleanly through that level, came back and it retested uh, that level, which uh, is also the 50 day moving average and the Ooh. trend line just perfectly. So that looks like a perfect long. My, my, um, uh, I'm concerned about it only because I don't trust Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin's doing doing a chart pattern, so this is a technical chart pattern that I call fuckery. Um, it's just, <laughs> it, 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 yeah. I mean, guys, that's an just, official term. That's an official term, by the way. I mean, used I mean, in the sniper it, club. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks like it was a you know a double top, but it's holding the trend line. I mean, uh, it, and it could just continue doing this for a while. Um, so uh, I, until Bitcoin proves that it's going to hold this level, I'm being a little um, skeptical about my own setup. So just note that because I what I prefer is just to get this over with, come down, drill for oil, fill up the gas tank and then go. That'd be my drill for oil. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think about it. If you're going to run a car, you need to put gas in the tank. We call it liquidity. But you need to fill up the tank. When how do you get oil? You got to drill for the oil in the ground. By the way, I'm I'm an electric car guy, so that doesn't apply to me. But anyway, um, to get the point, is that I would prefer that. But if it doesn't, then it's probably going to start just pushing up to the, you know, 50, 54, 54, 56 level. But it's not going to have as so much liquidity in the tank. So I'd prefer that. But back to Ordi. So if if Bitcoin does hold this level, then we've actually had a perfect setup right now. Just straight up, it's just sweet. Right, entering in at 66329. I would put my uh, stop loss underneath that wick. Can I'd you zoom in a little bit here for us, Bruce? Can What's you that? zoom in? Can you zoom oh, in yeah, a little bit there? As sure. much as you can. Then. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, that, this is the decision you make as traders, okay? Yep. Every time, yep. especially if you're trading leverage, okay? You, you need to decide what your bias is. If you look at a picture in front of you and, you know, that suits your bullish bias, then, you yep. know, if the trade is on and you understand your exit points, um, you know, you can always nibble. Nothing wrong with yep. uh, having yep. a look. And one of the things I'm always, um, that I always like traders, new traders to do is, is not just say, I'm, I'm bullish and I'm all bullish and and I like them to do to to um, actually plan out the counter trade. So if Bitcoin decides it's gonna go down and, and uh, go get some gas in the tank, that'd be fine because what you can do is then Ordi will, will, will then pop down also, hopefully come up retest, at which point now you've got to shorten the works. Small little scalp short down to about uh, the, the 618 level, which is what I would really love. So you can scalp that and then you pick up the long right off that 618. All right. This would be like yeah. that. Right. So if you plan all these moves in advance, you're never surprised. Right. That's this is the one I yeah. really like. Um, that'd be that'd be that'd be juicy. So those are three trades, one token. Yeah, I mean, I like that. You you know, there, there's always three options, right? So, yep. you know, your first level doesn't work. That's why you use stop losses. If you are exactly. trading spot, then, you know, you can ladder in on a 3A2. You can ladder in on a 618. You don't necessarily have to stop out. Uh, exactly. It's the high leverage guys. It's the DGENs. Um, okay, nice, Bruce. That was lovely. I've got a CAS, uh, CAS update here. I see there were lots of questions CAS. in the chat for CAS. And I told you, I'm not going to drop you guys on CAS. 
Okay, uh, so typical play here from Cats. We had such a nice move yesterday. Beautiful pump, uh, just short of our 1.618 that we were looking at. Mm -hmm. But look at this comeback, okay? So when the market dumps, what do you do? The first thing you do is you pull out your big zones. Where do you get your initial reaction? Where do you get that bounce when the market's dumping? Always identify these areas. And uh, the first area is normally the previous high, especially on a you know on a four hour, or eight hour candle. It's a stronger, it's a stronger support or resistance area. So eyes on those and uh, it gave us our first bounce here so 0 0.169 is your support region now that you want to watch for cas is the is the pullback over again we don't know okay we can't say for sure we got to watch btc and uh, you know if you are bullish what you can do is start laddering in okay two positions and understand where your next area is understand what you need to do to cut the position so a lot of the time if i get a candle close under a certain area then i say okay i'm trimming some of the position and uh, we wait for lower and uh, and we see how it yeah. plays out so uh, yeah. again level by level area by area and uh, once we break trends so you see a lot of the time we're going to get moves like this okay once we break these trends then we can get excited again turn super bullish pull out the dials you know ramp the shit up but, uh, you know, when things turn bearish, we often have to sit for a few days. If you guys were watching last week, uh, I think we were talking about it last week, where we get, you get 10 days of fun, not even, maybe yeah. five days yeah. of fun, okay? And then you sit back for seven, eight days. That's where you lose your most money, where you start mm -hmm. fiddling around, getting impatient, trying to force trades uh, and things like that. So uh, just understand where we are, understand now that we are potentially now in a downtrend uh, on some of these altcoins, and that's what yeah. we're dealing with. Bruce, thanks for hanging. Um, okay, I um, just want to do a, a BTC update for you guys. Let's just uh, just make sure we know what are what is what and where we need to be today. Um, so again, big levels to watch. If we get a meltdown now in the next uh, you know in the next hour or two, big level here, forty nine five. That's really where you want to bounce and you want to tie that bounce in with dominance. So remember, eyes on dominance. If BTC is dropping and uh, that dominance is starting to drop with it, it means these altcoins they're getting they're getting rinsed out, but they're not getting hurt as badly. Okay, so always watch it in conjunction with BTC pulling down. If uh, if that dominance is pumping while BTC is dumping, well, then you know you start looking at lower levels uh, for your altcoins. You start identifying the next uh, the next big region uh, for your altcoins. So very simple principle, uh, but uh, you know it takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of time to get there. Um, guys, we've run out of time. Uh, that was great. Okay, nailed a lot of tokens. You've got bullish and bearish uh, type setups as to where we are. Good luck out there. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, NVIDIA results tomorrow. So that could be a massive day uh, tomorrow. NVIDIA results, I mean, we know these AR tokens are are pumping on this NVIDIA, um, you know, bullishness and all these things. So let's see, you know, are we going to be selling that uh, selling that news into, uh, into the results tomorrow? And is that going to affect the whole crypto market? So we're going to have to wait and see how that plays out. But I'm really looking forward to uh, tomorrow's session and uh, hopefully some more action there. Catch you guys later.